exploring the gifts of the kingdom, the love of God, the Holy Spirit, and our gratitude above all for the lovely gifts that have been given to us. We'd like to start the program with a prayer. Holy Spirit, O oh most holy, perfect energy and light and love that serves us so beautifully, we come to you today and give thanks for this joining. We ask, as always, that you just be our hearts, our minds, our souls, that you continue to give us all the beauty of your gifts. We want to extend and share them with our friends because we're all together, we're all one body, we're the Christ mind. And we thank you so much for everything. And thank you, God, for the happiness and joy and life that you give us always. And help us to use the symbols of the world to, to share forgiveness and to share the path back to your eternal love. Amen. Amen. David, I was thinking um, before the program about moving into the practicality of receiving the gifts. And because people sometimes don't catch the first several programs, I'm wondering if there's a way you could help me. You're very good at this. <laughs> Pull everyone up into where we left off. It mm -hmm. may not be an easy question to ask of you because we did cover so much territory, but it was about the fact that we're totally love and pure and whole and well we were looking at how the ego tries to elude us through all kinds of journeys and paths when simply it is a holy instant mm -hmm. it's like the Course in Miracles meant it when it said you have it all now yes. can you help me with that yes well it does seem like that, that the living moment is the most practical thing and yet we want to really just use the symbols and the words to be clear on, on the meaning of that, what that really means. Because yeah. practicality has a sense of, of being very uh, useful and have a lot of, has a lot of utility to it. So yeah. we really want to get into that today. Yeah, and simplicity. And simplicity. Yeah. We need simplicity yes. because those egos are, uh, we were discussing early on that genius. Yes. They, it's, it's got an incredible <laughs> life of its own that right. we have allowed and we've even let it sidetrack us to think that we've got a while to go, that all these journeys and growth and opening up will mean that you're a step closer mm -hmm. instead of ultimately accepting the fact that we have no steps to take but one. Mm -hmm. Yes. But the first thing I think is important is like with about everything in this world is is first opening to opening our minds to start to loosen our definitions of things just like we need to open our definitions up of, of freedom of intimacy of love of peace we need to do it with practicality too because yeah. a lot of times the, the practical is just seen as as opposite opposite of more what we might call theoretical or abstract yeah. or whatever but but that childlike wonder of just being in a state of not knowing what is going on in the world really goes with listening to the inner voice and, and being in the flow of the moment. Yeah. Because we, we use some really uh, interesting phrases uh, when we talked last week was about there is no world. Yeah. And how do you live as if there is no world yeah. how, and do that practically? Yeah. And how you do that is that you, you stay so in the flow of the moment, so into the listening, so into the joining and the merging with the Holy Spirit, yeah. that you are inner directed. And you are not directed, and you're not responding and reacting to the images of the world. To anything in the world. Right. Yeah. Which, that's how we've been, that's part of our past conditioning and training, is to, you know, look at, at facial expressions to look at things in the world as like our cues yeah. on how we're supposed to proceed next and what we're yeah. learning is no inner direction is is always the way to proceed. Yeah. Yes, that's the genius of, of getting sidetracked mm -hmm. and um, that's practical to acknowledge that. It's, mm -hmm. it's okay for us to say, oh gosh, and have humor around. Yeah. 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 I yet felt, I yet wasn't hearing and hearing a voice can be such an interesting experience. It's you hear a voice or you get a feeling. I mean, it comes yeah. in so many modes of expression. Yeah. There's just a quick, I call it a quickening, almost like a, a not, there's just, of course, 
It's yeah. just a knowing. Yes. It's sometimes beyond words, sometimes they're explicit, sometimes an enemy will say just what you need to hear. It just can come from anywhere. Yes. It's no different than like someone who's identified with an athlete being in the zone. I mean, it's the yeah. same thing. It's not like the athlete <laughs> said, I heard the Holy Spirit say, turn around now, the pass is coming. I mean, you never hear that on an interview, but you do hear, wow, I was just in the zone and everything seemed yeah. like maybe it was in slow motion and I could see everything so vividly and so crisply. Yeah. And so what we really want to look at is what is that living moment? And in, mm -hmm. I think in, in practical terms, we could say that that there is no sense of means and ends. It means you're not doing something in terms of linearity in form to reach an end that's in the future. Yeah. That your end is happiness and that your end is joy in the moment. Yeah. And whatever seems to be flowing, the, there is a, a disappearance of like a dichotomy. So there's no like artist and art. Mm. where there's no musician and music. Yeah. It just all merges together in that moment. Yeah. And there's a complete flow, there's an effortlessness, there's an ease. And that is very practical. That if you ask a musician, they'll say, that was the most glorious piece that I experienced. I merged. When I merged, I, I watched, uh, it was like watching something flow where they may even say terms like, I didn't do it. Yeah. Meaning I personally did not do it. It was done through me in that sense. It's just all one thing. You gave me a buzzword from the last program, Linear, because you were talking, I think you at the end we were talking about the cross. Can you pick yeah. up there? Because sometimes our friends might not know what you mean by linear. Yeah. Well, linear would be if, like the cross, if we where the cross comes together would be the meeting point, but the vertical would be the spirit. This, okay. The and the horizontal would be the, we could call it the earth plane or All right, that time helps. and space arranged in linear sequences of events. So with that, the past and the future. With the past and the future and then that point right there where the vertical meets the horizontal yeah. is like a forgiven world, is, is the flow that we're talking about, is the zone that we're talking about. It's where there is no past and future. And this, this disappears. And right, the east and the west, the right and the left, and the past and the future disappear. And then you're in the vertical. Mm. And in the end, that, that is the way it is with everything. With communication, it seems as if on the earth plane that you're speaking to another, that you're, that you're speaking to someone that's not yourself. Yeah. But when you're in the flow of it, and there's just one thing occurring, then you yeah. literally see that there is no other. That you're merged. You're merged, that, that yeah. this is orchestrated by the Holy Spirit. And merging is an experience that you, that you, it's an experience. Yes. You know, there's a knowing, yes. there is no separation, there's nothing, yes. there's nothing between us. Yeah. Very peaceful, very relaxed, yeah. and there's a, a lot of... Peaceful, joyous. There's no personality to it, so it's not... There's no um, debate involved in it. There's no co conflict involved in it. There's no comparison involved no in comparison. it. No comparison. There's not even any balance involved in it. I mean, we yeah, were we looking at those ideas, that yeah. these are all ideas that involve duality, but it's just in the merge, in the singularity yeah. of that purpose that, that everything flows and you see the situation as a whole. Let's use another example because that is where we left off, the, the, the comparison. I was mentioning in a group that, oh, we had a balance with another voice, the two Davids. And it was very, very good. I mean, there wasn't that sense of, as you say, it was still comparing. Yeah. It was just the Holy Spirit in operation, pulling everything together for the highest good. Yes, orchestrating the whole orchestrating. situation around the purpose of awakening. Yeah. So that way, that it it's, reminds me of the setting the goal section in the course where he says, if you put your goal out front, yeah. If peace is your goal, then you will perceive everyone and everything in the situation yeah. as bringing forth that goal, that outcome of peace. And you will not separate it out into this one said this and this one said that, or that there were certain aspects of the situation that went well and certain that, that didn't. Yeah. That would be the ego looking back on a yeah. situation and trying to divide it and analyze it. And that's not the, what the living moment is. Yeah. That's where humor comes in. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Now, to help our friends with merging, igniting, you know, we can use so many analogies, settling back into the everlasting arms. Mm -hmm. There's such beautiful poetry yes. about that experience. Yes. I was mentioning before how this genius ego that likes to even tug us away from that quiet space, 
maybe an appreciation of that would be helpful to our friends who might say, well, gosh, that sounds good. It sounds very good in theory, but it is practically staying with it. It's being persistent, mm -hmm. being relaxed, trusting yes. that if that's the intention, if that's where you want to go, believe, trust, and it will mm -hmm. happen. Yes. Yeah, I think the, the thing that we loosen up from is that, that we've been raised with the idea of, for example, work and leisure. Yeah. Leisure is playtime. Leisure is fun time. Yeah. Leisure is unwind time, relax, yep. have a ball. And work is something very different from leisure. Mm -hmm. Work is work. Yeah. And what this is, in fact, practicality in that definition would be aligned with the work aspect. Leisure, they say, that's, that's fun and that's all nice and good, but it's not practical. And what I'm saying is the dichotomy between work and leisure is the illusion that, that when you have so merged in your purpose yeah. that you're always about your father's business, so to speak, or you're always about the flow of God, and therefore there is no work, work. or leisure. And the other dichotomies that come in there is kind of like my time and their time. Whether that's talking about my time as an individual and their time with my family or their time with my job and my occupation. Yeah. You can see this still that there's a split and the world tries many compromises. So the world would come up with things like, well, you need to compromise. You need to, to find a balance between yeah. my time and their time. And what I'm saying is compromise is not a good idea. It's an yeah. ego idea. Yeah. that you deserve total happiness and love and the only way that we can experience that in the moment is to let the dichotomy between work and leisure, my time, their time, yeah. you know, fall away completely and see that that was just erroneous yeah. from the beginning. It is interesting. We have been raised to think that if we're working hard at something, then we're doing it right. Mm -hmm. And um, this Always is for the future this too. is a perfect example yeah. of how easy and yes. how right this is. Yes. Here we are. This is it. We have everything right now. We're just joined in that moment. Yeah. And it's very much alive and, and it's not work. It's not play. It's just a, a it just combination. Is. It just is what it is. <laughs> and, uh, and work seems to be, have had the connotation of working for the future. Yeah. There's a there's a fear of consequences that is really the under underneath a lot of the ideas of work where it's like I have to work because if I don't work then I won't have food, Night star. clothing, <laughs> shelter, you know exactly the the so-called things that are seem to be very, very practical. But what if if I can take no thought for what I shall wear or what I shall eat? What if I can seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and just trust that all what else, else will, be will be added? Given and given. You know, that is a very different thing because yeah. that way I'm saying that I can flow in this. I can be, everything will be orchestrated and provided by the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And that that is practical. Yeah. And the old way, which is trying to do it all for myself personally on my own, which can seem very mature and, and uh, competent, as they say, a competent functioning adult, that that's part of what has to be released and forgiven as well. For me, so good neither point. am I dependent, David. Good and point. Neither am I independent. Yeah. But I am flowing and in, in the love of God. I am loved, and, and I, I am it. loved, and I know it, and I yes. feel it, yes. and I'm joined. Yes, that's it. And dissolving is where we talked about because for our friends to understand that this truly is possible, there is a dissolving into it yes. that you will know. Yes. I mean, it happens. Oh yeah. It happens. It's very apparent. Yeah, you, and in the dissolving, there is no world. Right. There's nothing. Yeah. Right. All so that. you're living as if there's no world. Yeah. And, and it's not in a kind of a, a, a way that's kind of trying to deny something or pretend about something, but you're just living on inner direction and you're full yeah. of joy and full of life and yeah. then you're not taking your cues from the world anymore and that is yeah. very practical. You said something very healing in the last few days that I loved. All the seeming chaos, all the little things that seem to be sort of whipping around and the shadows that are sort of bumping off each other, it's always perfect. Yes. And that, if we remember that when we're in traffic or things seem to not be working right or we have to rewind or whatever, it's still yes. perfect. Yes. What did, you used an expression about everything being in its divine order. Divine order. Divine yes. order. It's like the Bible in the Course yep. was saying all things work together for good. Yeah. And when you give yourself permission to relax into that and experience the divine order, yeah. then 
you're and the always, chaos runs yeah, away. Exactly. You're always in the right place at the right time. You can't take a wrong turn. You can't make a mistake and you can't even perceive mistakes. Yeah. You know, it just you you notice it all flowing along. Yeah. And um, you know, this even my seeming journey here and, and coming and you know getting a, a ticket at the last second within the last couple of me days. Me getting lost on 128. We have yeah. more to talk about. Right. Just <laughs> there again. We're here. We're just having this wonderful encounter and the cars Music are going and around. And the, we're going around yeah. Boston. Like right. right. <laughs> and just in the joy, we can laugh at it because it yeah. takes it away from like, oh, goals. North isn't working and either is south. Yes. How curious. Yes. <laughs> and the many angels, you know, I, like I've you know, the angel Fran picked me up at the, the airport. The angel Fran. Then I get to go to the angel Mary Beth and yep. the angels Kelsey and Christopher <laughs> and then the next day the angel Cindy <laughs> and then the next day it's so, suddenly it's the angels Rex and, and Nancy, Nancy and, and on and on and on and I even have angel lined up for tomorrow and the angel I James I know, is the angel chain. <laughs> yeah, so it's, th this is so practical and I use that just as an example because in yeah. letting go to the flow without having a plan. Yeah just staying in the moment and inner listening, then everything shows up fully. The yeah. situation is there as a whole, yeah. and it's wonderful. It's not like you're fishing for anything or you're hoping and you're, you're in one of those prayers of help me, help me, help me. It's more just thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you're out of the way. Along. Yes. That genius that would like to make some logic and does its dance. Yes. You know, isn't that interesting? Truly, when you, I, I always see things in either color or some sort of a form. I see something mm -hmm. shattering away, yes. and there you sit, glowing. Yes. yes. And in the glow, yes. is all. Everything comes to you. You have everything. There is absolutely nothing to do but be and receive. Yes. Yes. And that's practical. That's, that's practical. That happiness, that joy, is practical. You yeah. know, it's like um, just feeling like you're, you're hearing angels sing as you go along and do everything <laughs> because it feels that way, you know, because you feel like um, you're being serenaded, like yeah. that's always kind of a neat thing, like you're being serenaded like you are the meaning and the angels are rejoicing in your be remembering home. Yeah. I was going to say coming home, but it feels more like yeah. you're just remembering home. You're, you're remembering the home that you are. Yeah, after we did our show last week, it was wonderful. We drove home and there's this sort of flurry but when I put the brights on it was like the two of us sort of dissolved into this wonderful right. place yeah. it was just so symbolic yes. it doesn't take much to for us to be in total glee because we're <laughs> the, as we're going along on a highway and the snowflakes are coming and the brights make them look like little angels that are coming and then flying up <laughs> going above us hello hello they're greeting us as we're we're coming home from a show you know and, and you know it, that's the joy that's how children experience the world I think a lot yeah. where they're just going and they're just so they're just eyes get big over the littlest things I because know. they're in a sense of wonder yeah. and awe at, at everything Be, and, yeah as a yeah. child yes yeah and dare dare to just experience and it's not even a daring it's just when you're merged you just you see yes. you see differently yes you and do. you get all these gifts yeah lovely yes. reminders how about how loved you are and guided and yes. taken care of and that's good job yes. yeah all the time all the time yes. so that's practical yes. our friends we're trying to help them with yeah letting go surrendering living what the world we create this topsy-turvy experience when we really surrender yes. it is the most practical thing you can do yes. despite the fact we've been taught a million rules on shoulds and what works here yes. Yeah, it's a miracle. In fact, you, why would you give up a world or why would you give up linearity to live in the moment unless you can see the benefits of it? Exactly. So as you open your mind to miracles, yeah. it can seem almost like a magic show or <laughs> like, like a wondrous thing, like you're on a magic carpet ride and yeah. you know, the ego will even then start saying, is this real? I mean, is this hokey or what? <laughs> but you know, it's always got to judge or complain about something, but it is real. <laughs> It's yeah. the most real thing that there is. And then the perceptual world just starts to fade and fade in yeah. your awareness. And so it becomes more of just a, a, a subtle backdrop that, that you're not going to focus on. Yeah. Address time for us. Let, think about some of the, the journeys we hear about in the workshops. 
Um, and think of some of the things that we identify with, like, oh, it was traumatic once, and then it's like the heart thing and a monitor. Mm -hmm. We went all over the place, and then they got a little gentler. I mean, and the memory of a child, it's like when you have it, it's, and then you forget it. Mm -hmm. So we tend, to, we tend to look at the journey and see this history, this huge history. And you were making a comment about, um, it was a moment. It was a moment, all the one, the one problem was all the same. Yeah. Was, it, was, it was not a million, I'm getting better. Right. You know, yes. look at me, I'm getting better. Right. It hasn't been shattered into bits and pieces. We're in levels. There are right, into many, many levels. It, I, I was using an example. It wasn't that the problem of separation appeared and then it was answered, or even like that. It was simultaneously yeah. answered by the Holy Spirit. Yeah, I like that. So it is over and done. Yeah. That's why when we say this world is over or there is no world, that's just a, a remembrance of that, the, the fact that it has been answered. Yeah. Now to see that though, again, there can't be means and end, cause and effect that's separate. You can't be working for future enlightenment to experience the joy of what is now. Yeah. Everything, time has to collapse down. Yeah. And in the end you start to see that you really don't have the ability to order and sequence events in a linear way, kind of like a slideshow, you know, where you, the yeah, slides are all lined up like that. Gosh, if, there it is. You, you look at it from one angle and you see all these separate little slides. When you look, when you step back, you see it's a circle. It's like the ring. It's it's no beginning, no end. It's it's yes. all one thing. Yes. The images merge together. Yeah. We're down to five minutes. And okay. So, my friend David, we're talking about the practicality of being in the moment. Mm -hmm. And if our little geniuses say, you can't go there, I've got a reason for you not to stay quiet and be within. We say, of course it can be done. Yes. And if, when you start to experience the trust and the experience of being home and just being, yeah. then you won't be fooled. Right. There's yeah. nothing to be fooled by in those voices because you have an experience that is so far beyond what yeah. anything in the past could ever bring. And so it's a sure thing. Yes. You know, even though we've seen, we've created these reasons to not get there, which look like we're actually creating the journey mm -hmm. to get there. It's right. just that interesting. Yes. That interesting. Yes. It's inevitable. It's, it's inevitable. It, it's who we are. Yes. yes. Yeah. And that is always something that it's always fun to share, that mm -hmm. we're home, time never started, it's never going right. to end. We've always had it. We've yes. always been whole and complete. We've been mm -hmm. in eternity forever. And um, merging with the source, the cause, yes. and we become. Yes. And it's simple. Yes. We try and make it hard. It's just the ego it's, trying it's, to. I know that the ego tries to. It. But, but yeah. who we are is there's such ease that there's no difficulty. Yeah. In it. Not even the possibility of difficulty in, yeah. in that moment, in that sure, yeah. certain, tranquil moment. It just goes beyond the possibility of a, of yeah. a problem. Yeah. And I, I, not to make my friends think this is a, something that no one can do, I bet you there isn't anyone who hasn't been given, just slipped into it, whether they wanted to or not, have it, because yeah. it's inevitable, yeah. that knows exactly what we're talking about. Yes. That's a given. Yes. Everybody knows what we're talking about. Yes. Bliss. Yes. It, it's like the And glimpse. you slip into it sometimes. <laughs> when you don't plan to slip into it, mm -hmm. Help me with that. When you don't plan to slip into it, mm -hmm. you slip into it. Yeah, that just means <laughs> that in your mind you're desiring it because nothing could come into your experience without your desire. So it's like um, when, when you relax some moments and, and all the defenses, the mask is laid down, yeah. the defenses are all laid down, yeah. and then... You stop trying. Right, it's just a moment that just seems to creep into awareness. <laughs> yeah. And then the ego part is very frightened of that moment and it will either try to rebel against that and distract away into some busyness or something to distract, or it will try to grab it back, thinking that it did something yeah. to get it, and yeah. then it will try to do stuff to try to get it back, and it can get very frustrating to the ego because the ego cannot bring, doesn't know what the eternal moment is, and it can't manufacture it, and it can't bring it around. No, no. and it's not real, it doesn't mm. exist. Mm. Yeah, there is no world. Right. From A Course in right. Miracles. Right. I like yes. that. There is no world. Yes. yes. Yeah. Light and love and joy are real. Yeah. And because of that, there, there is, is no, no world. world. 
with that merging, with the experience of being totally whole and at home and perfect and in eternity, of course there is no world. Yes. yes. Yeah. Well, that is worth celebrating and being grateful for and giving thanks for. And, um, and everyone is, and I shouldn't just say it, but one mind is definitely into that celebration. Mm -hmm. The one self, the fact there's nothing between us, all of us together, our audience and our friends are all joined in the Christ mind with us. Mm -hmm. And we're all at this moment totally free. Freedom. Yes. There's freedom. Yes. There's no limitations. There's no lack. There's no conflict. Yeah. Peace and freedom. They're the I same. I love that word, yes. freedom. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about our last program about merging with our life and the joy of, of being present and how the linear plane vanishes and there's no world because we're so in the moment yes. and whole and perfect. And the idea of really speaking about gentleness and the saints and the way that we forgive and let go and, and see the oneness in another, I'd love to have you talk a little bit more because you're really good about Jesus. I find every time you speak, I just come away feeling that that strikes me as so close to home mm -hmm. because he is so deeply loved by all of us and he's the perfect example. Everyone will resonate to that's what Jesus did. Yes, yes. Can you help us with his style? And in those three years, was it three years? That yes, about three that's years. That's all. Seemingly within the world as far as a public ministry of just uh, seeming to walk apart from other brothers and sisters, although the mind was, was aware of its oneness with God. Yeah. And so he, in one sense we could say he knew he was the dreamer of the dream and wasn't therefore afraid of any situations or dream figures or so forth. Yeah. But he was very, very gentle and very uncompromising and very certain. Yeah. And I think meekness and strength are two qualities that uh, the <laughs> ego can't put together. <laughs> it's it baffling. Of, it thinks of strength and it thinks of the might of uh, power and weapons like um, Julius Caesar or Adolf Hitler. Judgment. Judgment <laughs> and power and, uh, you know, weapons and so forth. And then meekness is thought of as just as gentle as a flower or, yeah. you know, it, it, meekness and weakness are generally uh, That's associated. Right. And this is, Jesus was the exact opposite of that. He was meekness and strength in one. Yeah. Defenselessness. Yeah. There was nothing there ever to defend. You know, the story in the Bible about one of the disciples, you know, you know, cutting the ear off of a soldier and then Jesus puts the ear back on. I mean, that, yeah. that always yeah. was very poignant about how he was so defenseless, yeah. and there was no sort of defense ever involved with him. It was just a, a discernment between what was real yeah. and what was not real. And David, he showed us how to be, Yes. how to be. And as you said beautifully, he knew. He knew the illusions. He knew he was totally immersed in his father. Yes. And yet, he was a role model. Yes. I'd like to think of him as a role model, and I want our friends to just enjoy his his mode of operation. Yes, yes. As, as there's an awakening, it's like first you, as you awaken and you start to let go of the judgments and concepts of the mind and, and the self-concepts, it seems to be helpful to have a role model mm. until you finally merge with the Christ mind that yeah. is the mind yeah. that was in Christ Jesus and the, the mind that that is beyond Jesus in the sense that it is the Christ, yeah. the one Christ. Yeah. And that's really important, I think, to, to be able to have something that you can look to and look to as you go along yeah. in gentleness, you know, yeah. learning to treat others as Jesus treated. And he knew what was in store. Yes. He knew. And I yes. think that's an interesting story in itself. He knew yes. what was going on. Yes. And he was so present and so home. Yes. He was fine. Yes. Yes, everything was used, even though the examples were kind of extreme, like the crucifixion oh. and the resurrection, yeah. it was just a, a wonderful opportunity to teach defenselessness, to teach that communication between the Father and the Son are unbroken, yeah. and in the end to teach that there is no death. Of course, yeah. using the, the symbols of bodies, and the body's body seeming to be crucified and resurrected, but, but the real teaching is that the mind that lets go of judgment, that yeah. lets go of the ego, is resurrected and yeah. remembers itself as the Christ and that's yeah. that's what that was about. And that's what he did. Yes. That's a huge lesson. Oh. 
And of I course, think it, Miracle says the yeah. last useless yes, journey. Yes, that was the last useless journey. It was very mm -hmm. extreme, but, but it really helps make the point. Yeah. And one of the things I think we wanted to talk about today was just how correcting errors from the bottom up, it's like Jesus, um, when he came, it wasn't just a public ministry where he just said two words, God is, and then that was yeah. it. He just sat there in <laughs> silence, ya. you know. He <laughs> seemed to move about. He seemed to be in many walks of life. He seemed to be moving around quite a lot around Galilee and many places. Yeah. And, and what it was was um, he did a lot of his teachings as he was sitting down and eating dinner with people or as he was walking along the way, the road to Emmaus, and many times where he did not try to beat anyone over the head with yeah. the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. He was a demonstration. His beatitudes, his, his manners of living were so loving and so gentle yeah. that everyone was invited. Yeah. And even the parts of the Bible and, and areas where it can seem harsh more with the Pharisees and the Sadducees and so forth were really just really getting clear that there's a difference between the spirit of the law and the letter of the law. Yeah. That the letter of the law was really the ego's rules and regulations and rituals, again, at trying to make tasks or make things in form yeah. that you had to do to get back yeah. to the kingdom of heaven. And what he did was he was quite firm along those areas because that was so off base. Yeah. You know, and, people, and they asked him to be a king? Yes, asked him to be a king and he would not be because he knew that my kingdom is not of this world. Yeah. You know, when he turned over tables in the temple, it was just that there was a lot of exchange of money, buying and selling of things and reciprocity, you know, and killing of animals yeah. to sacrifice them for the belief in that God required that. And it was so yeah. opposite of the loving nature of the, of the Heavenly Father yeah. that the tables were overturned but not in anger. Mm. It was just a, a way of um, providing another extreme example like the crucifixion that this is not the way, my brothers yeah. and sisters, you know. Yeah. We have a way of gentleness and joy and that's really what, the, what all that was about. Mm. A gentle friend and all his demonstrations were of that. He was merged with his father and whatever he saw, he, I like the way you said he was certain and he was strong and he was firm and he, he was uncompromising. Yes. Mm. yes. And, he, and you take the stranger in, in the sense that, that as you live in that Christ mind and that life, everyone you meet, you're in a state of fearlessness. So, yeah. you know, in my experience, the living Jesus will, as I'm driving along and uh, the, the hands on the wheel turn and I'm picking up a hitchhiker yes. or I'm meeting a stranger in a laundromat or in a grocery store or in a rest area, somewhere by the way, it, it's you're always meeting yourself mm -hmm. and we teach most by demonstration yeah. so this idea of trying to beat people over the head with oneness or you know or with singularity or so on and so forth yeah. it's in the attitude yeah. and many of the people that Jesus came in contact with and many that I come in contact with it's not about getting into metaphysics you don't greet somebody in the laundry mat and say <laughs> hey you know what there's no world <laughs> You don't walk into the hospital and, and rap on the, somebody's cast as their attraction and say, you know, you did this to yourself, you know. Yeah. What you do is yes, you go right. so inward <laughs> and you're in such joy that you don't take the symbols and images of the world. You don't see them. You don't see them. It's seriously, yeah. you're into the inner listening and the inner joy, yeah. which is what it's all about. Yeah. Therefore, you're not into trying to correct brothers and sisters. You're simply into living in and with the capital C correction in your own mind, which yeah. is staying in the one-mindedness. And then what occurs is just a, a gentle outflowing of, of that one mind, a reflection of the beauty yeah. of that one mind. That's interesting too about judgment. You did this to yourself. What's this about? What does this mean yeah. that you've come down with pneumonia today? Yeah. yeah, we're really hard on each other. Yeah, that's just the ego. Yeah. Kind of, the ego beating itself up yeah. over that, even with metaphysics or yeah, even something. Even with metaphysics. Yes. And you can resolve it if you can get to the cause of why you did this to yourself. Yes. That's amazing. And as we've talked again, that again, now we're getting back to clearing up level confusion because mm. if there's no mind and matter, mm -hmm. and, if, and if mind cannot take on the characteristics of form, then there's no a possibility of breaking form into well matter and sick matter <laughs> or live matter and dead matter you know it's yeah. just matter yeah. is matter and it's neutral and it's nothing yeah and when you stay in the joy of that then 
everything around you. It's like with Jesus, the, the woman touches the hem of his garment and is made whole, seemingly as a symbol of her body was, was, was made whole as a symbol of being aware of that wholeness of mind that, that God is all. Yeah. It's, uh, I heard a story of Mary Baker Eddy riding to her cottage, afternoon cottage ride and everything, and along the roads on the sides, as she passed by, the symptoms were leaving those that were laying in the gutters oh. on the roads on the side of her. What a beautiful there, story. There was no seeming even interaction in body, but it was just yeah. the reflection and the certainty yeah. of the one mind, and that yeah. that is all that there really is that sends reflections all out around it. And what a beautiful that's, story. It's involuntary healing when yeah. you just realize the oneness is, is really all that there yeah. is. Yeah, and the ego does try to make that sound impossible. Totally impossible. But the experience of the merge, the merger, is, 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 it cannot be questioned. Yes. Yeah, the ego will never understand healing because it was, it was, it is a thought of sickness and it is an impossible thought. So there really is no healing in the ego. Yeah. And that's why all of the attempts in whether we talk about medicine or we talk about even more new age contemporary techniques, you know, that involve the body and balancing polarities, chakras, acupuncture, breathing, breathing. Mm. you could go on and on and on. But anything that really involves the body is still not really true healing yeah. because it's the perception that sees fragmented differences in parts that sees duality yeah. that's where the error is that's yeah. where the sickness is and once that clears up in forgiveness and, and everything merges into one tapestry then yeah. that is the healing yeah and bodies are thoughts if we can help our friends with the symbolism of the body it's yeah. thought yes it's ego and so it's separate yeah thought forms i, thought I, forms. I think of thought forms in terms of Christ is an idea or a thought in the mind of God, but Christ is abstract. It's ex yeah. totally extensive yeah. and total, totally vast. Yeah. Thought forms are, we could call them anything from particles to black holes to bodies to yeah. a leaf to, or yeah. a blade of grass. Yeah. It's, the, it's trying to arrange them into a hierarchy mm. and say that some are more valuable than others yeah. is where the error occurs that yeah. when the world was projected out initially, the Holy Spirit answered it simultaneously. And all that means is he neutralized it. Just yeah. like uh, you might- Neutralizer. Right, you might neutralize a poison. <laughs> and suddenly or the poison- Or permanent. Or, right, anything. <laughs> it just neutralized everything. And what that means is it, it made it remain one tapestry. Like mm. this tablecloth, if we see all the little bits and specks, it's just one thing and the Holy Spirit sees it all as one thing. Yeah. It's only the ego that wants to pick out a particle. And make something of it. Make something of it, give it a name, give it a, 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 a quality, separate it by time and space and, and qualities like texture and quality and so on and so forth when the tapestry is whole. Yeah. And that's, Jesus is a good symbol of that too. He simply saw the whole tapestry. Yeah. You know, it was beyond yeah. having 12 apostles. It was like everything and everyone yeah. was in his mind and he knew that there was nothing apart from his mind. So he healed, when they say the stories about he healed the sick, he didn't see. He mm -hmm. just was a part of the mind. Yeah. He was home. Yes. And then we take it that one more step that we started with on our first shows, yeah. and it's the I am. The I am. Because the we, we did talk about, you know, forgive me your illusions, his mm. request to us, which is simply to say then, that what a great model, what a great learning opportunity, what a great um, way shower, and now I must accept to myself that I am as God created me, you yeah. know? That's the claiming it, that's yeah. the atonement, yeah. that is the message of A Course in Miracles, and yeah. the, the whole teachings of Jesus and, and all of the saints and the mystics. Claim it for yourself, yeah. Let the voice for God speak through you and then merge into that so it's not a voice for God and then a, a little you that's an instrument. It's just one yeah. experience, you, one you, Christ You mind. mentioned Mother Teresa yes. being just an, an angel. Yes, very much uh, such devotion. She saw herself as a bride of Christ and what that meant was seeing Christ in everything, everyone that she picked up, everywhere yeah. she went. Also, being in the moment, it wasn't like um, there was special things, but in just drawing some water or getting a salve to put on someone or picking up someone from the street, done with such simplicity and love because it was everything. She was picking Jesus up. Yeah. 
and she was aware of that. Yeah. Everything, everyone that she interacted with, it was, it was Jesus that she was serving. And yeah. her heart was soaring in happiness. It, so uh, there's yeah. another great symbol. Yeah. Mother Teresa, Mary Baker Eddy, Mary Baker speaking Eddie, of the saints. The forms can seem to be different. Yeah. But yeah. the the idea that transcends or that's behind all the forms of the veil yeah. is the same. Yeah. I loved your example about Mary Baker Eddy. That because I'm just starting to study her a bit and understand her, and um, I'm rather taken. Mm -hmm. with her vision. Yes. A pioneer. Yes. I mean, yet another beautiful gift. Yes. Which so much shot out of her work. So many th schools of healing and thought. And yes. She was really um, a turning point. Yes. Mm. Yes, the, the ego has no words for it. I mean, even, yeah. even among words of the world, it was, you could say she was ahead of her time, but to oh. me, she's timeless. I mean, yeah. the if the, the writings that are reflected in, in the science and health, that are reflected in A Course in Miracles, that are reflected in the teachings of Jesus you know, 2,000 yeah. years ago, there, there is a timeless quality because yeah. they, the, word, the words just point to the experience. And when you accept that experience for yourself, yeah. that is, they have served their purpose. You know, then the words can just dissolve away. Yeah. So we, we merge. If we can just tell our friends again, which they understand, we just merge mm -hmm. and everything is taken care of. Yes. Everything comes to us that we need, our assignments, whatever. Yes. We're just our vision, yes. our gift. And again, it's very subtle, but even the quality of merge tends to, to have two coming to one. And when you really let go into the idea of one, it's just yeah. the one-mindedness that is now has always been and always will, always be. will be. It's it's that joining is not so much a verb or an action yeah. that occurs, but it's just yeah. a state of mind. Yeah. And ex it really we come down to acceptance. You know, if I yeah. accept that state of mind, then that is the end of we the story. We don't have to ask for what we have. Right. Exactly. Right? That, there's no asking at that point. <laughs> it's just being. Being it. <laughs> right. Claiming it. Yes. Enjoying it. Yes. Accepting it. Yes. 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 Oh. And we do that when we finally throw in the towel, don't yes, we? Yes. Sooner than later, there's just no choice. Yes, the towel of the world. <laughs> the world, the towel that... Gets wrung out. <laughs> right. It never, <laughs> it never did serve, you know, in the sense of, um, it would never content our holy mind. Time and space, you know, can never content something that's eternal. Yeah. And that's why we talked of our program of spirit not coming in to matter. It's just kind of seeing matter for what it is, false. It doesn't exist. And then there is no that's world. That. Yes. Yeah, and um, the gentle approach, yes. which you are bringing up around Jesus and Mother Teresa, the gentle approach is just not seeing yes. error. Yes. Really. The gentleness really gentleness goes hands in hands with with defenselessness. In yeah. other words, Jesus was completely gentle because he was so defenseless, and that means you you cannot have an image that you identify with. Mm. As soon as you identify with the body, gentleness is out the window. Yeah. Because there's attack and defense. It's yeah. protection and everything, defenses come in immediately. So there must be a disidentification with the body and the world. And what does that mean? That would mean also disidentification from, from groups, from organizations. I've always felt the Holy Spirit and Jesus have told me that to stay totally affiliated with the kingdom yeah. I must may, remain totally unaffiliated with the, the person's places, things of the world. Yeah. And therefore, I can include yeah. everything and everyone. And yeah. there's no where this begins and where that ends. Yeah, because you're not identifying with a separation. Yes, yes. Which would say it's different from something else. Yes. Mm. So it's, it's back to if, if I'm identified with a concept like Christian, where does Christian begin and non-Christian begin? Yeah. If, if I'm identified with A Course in Miracles and I hear the phrase, and I've been hearing it for years, Course Community. Yeah. Come to the Course Community. <laughs> come, come to our Course Conference and Course in Miracles groups. But I would just say, well, where does the Course Community begin? And, and where does the non-Course Community sounds begin? Sounds like it's going to end somewhere. Yeah, yeah, it sounds like it has a boundary to it. And I, that's why, in the end, I, I cannot be affiliated with anything in form if I'm to stay affiliated with the Heavenly Father. The Heavenly Father. And that's where, if the Father and I are one, 
and that is the truth, yeah. then I stay affiliated with that. Yeah, that's a wonderful point. Yes. It's a wonderful point. Yes. Yeah. I am of the world, all, I am all, and yes. everything connects, I am connected to everything. Yes. Yes. So I can't choose yes. to affiliate. Yes. Including in the most basic things like a birth moment, like this is our birth moment. Like yeah. I cannot have an origin in time and space, which a birthday in a personal sense oh. would seem to say that I had a, an origin in time and space somewhere and I had these parents and this hospital or this yeah. circumstance. But if I have an eternal origin, if my starting point and my ending point is in God, then that other is completely dispelled. Yeah. So what I say is it's you have you celebrate the moment and whatever the form seem to be, it's really just I call it those are just excuses to <laughs> to remember the the present. So you, you don't have to start to push anything away in your world in terms of symbols. Neither do you have to kind of gather certain symbols around you and say this these symbols are me but you just stay non-affiliated from the symbols. You stay in the joy and you rejoice. Yeah. Mm. You're getting awful easy on us here, David. <laughs> and we're eliminating more. <laughs> we're eliminating, you know, God is, is a reason for a party. Yeah. You know, we don't need to have, we don't have to find things and days yeah. and, and memorials and yeah. things to make reasons for parties. We have an internal party going on. It's the party of the living moment. Yeah. And the other stuff is just a backdrop anyway. So, Well, I was just thinking of celebrating um, a Martin Luther King Day. Are we celebrating death? I mean, are we, separate, are we celebrating separation? Or, I mean, what are we celebrating when we think in mm -hmm. terms of just something special? Mm -hmm. Something special. Well, it's like if, if, if it's a quality or a symbol to you of, of nonviolence, yeah. of, of, of marching for freedom and truth, then that's fine. I think the deeper you go into those true experiences of what true freedom is, yeah. of true nonviolence, which goes way beyond the world of form to not having a scrap of attack thoughts in your mm. mind, it, they're all starting points. You know, yeah. Gandhi, there are many that were initial introductory kind of symbols to me but Jesus was also a symbol, but it just was a symbol of going to a tremendous depth of yeah. purity of heart. Yeah. For blessed yeah. are the pure of heart, for they yeah. shall see God. It's like the Holy Spirit was just saying, aim high, you know, yeah. aim for awakening. You yeah. don't have to aim for uh, a political solution or gaining a, a country freedom or a race freedom or equality. You want freedom from the entire prison of the belief in separation yeah. from the belief in this world. Yeah. And so that was just what I heard was aim high, aim high. go all the way. <laughs> what, a, what an example Jesus was, really. Yes. I mean, he has, look at the impact. Yes. I mean, yes. that says it all. Yes. His defenselessness, his love, his not yes. identifying with this world. Yes. You see, we all heard that. Yes. Right? Yes. And it was such see? a perfect it was demonstration that, that, again, that's why I think the symbol has just been so strong in the consciousness of the world because it's, it's so bright yeah. and it, it just can't be reconciled with the world in the end. It's almost like an invitation to, to come through a keyhole and yeah. to go through the keyhole and then experience the Christ mind yeah. that I and the Father are one and, and that our kingdom is not of this world. The power of being home. Jesus yes. was definitely, I mean, he was heard. Yes. Yeah. Yes. In his defenselessness. Yes. In his vision. Yes. Mm. And in the end, to just again forgive Jesus the sense that, accept that he is who I am, you know, that, that the Christ yeah. mind is who I am. Otherwise, now with copyright issues, that's a big deal about um, who authored the Course. Right. Who authored A Course in Miracles? Well, first you could say, well, the Holy Spirit, or some are saying Jesus of Nazareth authored the Course, but we're getting back into time again. That's and right. And then we're getting into words and, and who owns words and so forth. And Jesus' whole message was, God is my author. I give all the glory to God. I am not the author of myself. I and the Father are one. And he even says in the Course that there are two parts because the Father created the Son. Yeah. So this should be, bring an end to that silliness about who authored the who Course. Who authored the Course. And trying to find a personality in historical time. Yeah. And using that as a case, or using a case like Helen Schuckman, you know, as the author, when 
when there are no authors. There can't be authors. There are no authors <laughs> because the authority problem is the illusion and that God is the author and God gives just pure spirit and yeah. that's what it means to, to author. And as reality. you said, the Holy Spirit will use this example. Yes. Oh, yes. For the highest good. For the release. For the release. Heaven, don't cling to words or or to different positions or foundations yeah. and, and think you have to go to court and take a stand. What you resist persists and, you know, if you think there's something that you have something. to combat, then... But what a beautiful example of what to give up, just to give up. Give it up. Give it yeah. up. Give Let it up. go of everything. <laughs> Thank you, David. Okay, you're welcome.